your safety online is in question, and a secure link with the cloud is becoming a necessity. Can Cisco connect the globe and defend your data, or will it be blown away by coming competition? Is Cisco starting to get credit for its phenomenal transformation? For ages, we've known Cisco as a titan that dominates the networking equipment space. But in recent years, it's been tr transitioning from a hardware play into more of a software company, embracing new end markets like cybersecurity, the data center, Internet of Things, Wi-Fi, all sorts of stuff that we didn't used to associate with it. Now, last night, the company reported a quarter that confused many people. While Cisco delivered a top and bottom line beat, its sales were nevertheless down year over year. And the stock sold off in after hours trading. Investors fretting about its stagnating growth. But that was the wrong word. It's, that's all misperception. Cisco is not just a networking equipment plan anymore. If you looked at the company's deferred revenue, which is what matters in the software business, it was up 13%. Deferred revenue from software subscriptions exploded higher, up 51%. That tells me the all-important transformation is going very well. I think people are finally getting their heads around the fact that th th this is a big change, which is why the stock snapped back from last night's declines, only gaining 2% best performing stock of the Dow. Also gave you a nice dividend boost, 3.45% yield. Don't don't take it from me. Let's check in with Chuck Robbins, the CEO of Cisco Systems. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Chuck, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. This Good was to be the, here. This was the quarter, Chuck. Yeah. I saw it from the volume from 45, 45 million shares. I saw it from the fact that people are getting around the, the recurring revenue, which yep. is, and I think you're beginning the remultiplization, re rating of Cisco. Could I, be, how right am I? Well, I hope you're right. It feels that way, certainly. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's, there's sort of three, three key takeaways okay. from the quarter, I think. Number one, the 51% uh, growth you mentioned says that, uh, you know, and it hit $4 billion. So the, 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 the strategy is working, what we've been focused on. Uh, the second thing is, when you look at what we talked about with our Jasper platform yes. and 40 million connected devices adding more than a million and a half per month, in fact, as, as the infrastructure gets more distributed mm -hmm. over the next few years, the network's actually gonna be more important because you gotta apply security in the network, everything else in the network. And the third thing I would say is that this quarter you really saw you saw two different methods that we use for innovation. Number one, you saw us launch SparkBoard, you, right. you saw us launch NextGen Firewall, Cisco Umbrella from a security, new versions of Tetration and Data Center, uh, and then you saw us leverage our M&A capability with what I think is one of the most important acquisitions we made with AppDynamics. We gotta so. talk more about it. I know you yes. broke it on our show, which I was thrilled, but when you put, when this deal closes, what will the recurring revenue look like? What will the software versus hardware ratio look like? And what will the company, this, the fellow who's running, used to be from Adobe, yeah. who engineered the software David, transformation that, yes. well, that, that a lot of people got in on early on. Yeah. He is a, he's an impressive guy. I talked to somebody on the team here who spent some time with him. So the CEO of, of uh, who's uh, staying on. AppD, yeah. Day. So let, let me tell a little bit about AppD. First okay. of all, they were they were growing twice as fast as their nearest competitor when we acquired them. Uh, they have a great enterprise solution. We're actually a customer. That's one of the ways we know them. Okay. And uh, they've only penetrated 275 of the top of the Fortune 2000, and they've effectively never built and taken advantage of a partner ecosystem play that we can deliver for them. So. Uh, you know, they're going to bring another point, roughly, right. of recurring to us. 75% of their revenue is recurring today. So it fits very nicely, not only into our strategy to bring relevance at the application layer and in the business layer, but it also fits nicely in this business model transition we're talking about. I want to go back to a word that you snuck in that I think defines the new Cisco. Yeah. It's got an ecosystem. It really didn't, Chuck. You've given an ecosystem. Well, we've had we've always had a resale partner resale ecosystem, right. but if you if you look at what's happening now, whether you look at IoT Interesting. or you look at security, or even if you look at the emerging enterprise architecture from the infrastructure all the way to the application, customers are looking at architectures, and we are opening up every element of our portfolio so that you can actually program to it, write to it, extract analytics from it. So you do create the opportunity for platforms and then the ecosystem to take advantage of it on top. So, absolutely. Right. Now, in the same time, uh, you've got an amazing amount of cash. You've got 71 billion, gigantic amount overseas. You gave that dividend boost. If we do get corporate tax, or more importantly, if we do get this repatriation, it, you're probably the company that stands on a percentage base to benefit the most, maybe other than Apple. Yeah, you know, we're one of the top five holders of over, offshore cash. And, uh, you know, our strategy from a capital perspective won't change, right? We'll still focus on strategic investments and then committed to capital return to our shareholders, which we have been for some number of years, so. 
well, same thing. It, see, I just keep hearing these things. I keep thinking 13 times earnings. And why that is, is because the transformation is a little bit difficult on the surface. But underneath, you made it very clear in this conference call about all the recovery. You even at one point said, listen, we went from 27 to 31 recovery. Now go 32, and it'll just keep keep going up. Uh, and I just think that it's time, right? Well, if you look, if you look at... Um 31% of our revenue was from recurring right. balances this quarter. And if you go back six quarters ago when I started, it was 26. It took me four right. quarters to move it two points. It was a giant company. That's the thing. Yeah. And then the last two quarters, we moved it three more. And the product side was the same. At first, 6% of product revenue came from recurring. It took four quarters to move it to seven. Right. And then two quarters, we moved it to 10. So I think that says two things. Number one, the company's behind it. And number two, we had to evolve our offer structures to support it. And I think that's what we've done in the last year and a half. Okay. I mean, you'd be obviously a beneficiary on the repatriation. How about on immigration? I mean, where do you, where do you stand there? Because there, are, there are, may not be enough smart people that are public schools produced in this country to work for Cisco may need more. Well, I don't think it's just Cisco. I mean, every industry in the world, technology is becoming more relevant and technology is becoming core right. to every strategy. So. First of all, we need to increase the amount of STEM education that's occurring in this country. We need to do a better job of educating our students in technology because every job is going to be a technology job. Right. Right. And then we also believe that when we educate people from outside the United States and we give them the great education, we should want them working for great institutions here. Right, not go back so, to their country. Uh, if so you're we think there's, you know, there's balance and... Uh, and I actually think that the current administration understands that balance. You had a good talk with uh, Trump yet? Yeah, I think, the, uh, I think they do agree that we need, I mean, the smartest people we want working in our companies. Right. right? Why wouldn't we? Well, I, I just do know, I mean, do you, what are the prospects really? I mean, we've had so much controversy now for, uh, it, it, I, mean, I have to ask you, because I was hoping fast track repatriation. I, are you thinking maybe 2018 now? Because there's so much no, craziness I'm, going on. I'm still optimistic that, uh, that, it will occur this year. I think that if you look at the different tax plans, the one consistent theme throughout is repatriation. And right. uh, I think there's variations. There's a lot of detail to be worked out. But I actually believe that, you know, the House, the Senate, the, and the uh, administration will come together, compromise on things. I think they realize how important it is for not only the U.S. economy, but frankly, if the U.S. economy picks up steam, it's good for the global economy. Well, you know what you mentioned on the quarter? You said you feel good from a macro standpoint for the U.S., but that was really the only area that you felt really good about. What could happen if things go better overseas? Well, you know, Europe has got a lot of geopolitical dynamics right. that are creating uncertainty, and businesses don't like to invest into uncertainty. Right. Right. And so uh, I think the thing that's happening in the U.S. is people are pretty confident that there are going to be, uh, you know, there, it's, a, it's a good business environment right, right now. But, but you, I mean, there was a major change. There was a way you, look, the last call you were not, you were upset, okay? You were, <laughs> you were not happy with how you did. Something happened in the last 90 days. I mean, I have to believe it was either Washington or maybe the logjam, but this was a different chuck on this call. Well, we had, uh, <laughs> I think the, the fundamental issue is that um, last call we had two big issues, right? We talked about service provider. Right. And we talked about emerging countries. And emerging countries continue to be a challenge. We have seen strength in Mexico, strength in India, and, and then we have challenges. Although, uh, you know, even Russia and Brazil are beginning to show a little bit, yeah. a little bit of positive movement. Uh, but overall, you know, I think the, the general belief is that there's more optimism in the U.S. economy. And again, when the U.S. economy is positive, it's good for the world. Well, I got to tell you, I thought it was a great quarter, and I think we're never going to see the, well, I shouldn't say that, but I think the 20s are behind you, and the 40s do back it. That's Chuck Robbins, CEO of Cisco. This was the breakout quarter, people. May have money's back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.